If you're listening to this, I'm probably dead or missing. You can't briefly describe the indescribable, so I've resolved to recount everything that happened to the three of us, exactly how it happened, to ensure that the truth remains out there one way or another, regardless of what happens to me. My name's Cole Gray. In October of 2018, my friends and I organized a hiking trip into the woods nearby for a few days over the school holidays, where we encountered something that is now permanently burned into my mind. My account begins early April, the middle of week 11. We were 16 at the time, and God, we hated school. Our peers were callous, imbecilic assholes. The teachers were overworked, and as a result, they were quick to anger and overly strict. The facilities couldn't have been updated in at least a decade. We were in English when I got a text from Alec, reading, It's on. We knew what he was on about. Alec came late that day, opened the door, trudged over to where we were sitting, and flopped into the chair like a corpse, the teacher giving him a death glare all the while. She yelled at him something about disrespect. I wasn't listening. I was more interested in what Alec had to say. Alec looked over at us with a grin on his face. They said we can do it. Alec's father was an outdoor enthusiast, an interest which Alec had inherited. He'd had the idea of us spending a few days by ourselves in the forest near Alec's house. It was a decent size, something like 200 square kilometers. There was even a lake that we planned to go fishing in. I'm not sure how Alec talked us into it. He was charismatic, I guess. A normal parent wouldn't have allowed that. But we lived in a small town, and ours worked a lot, hence our independence was encouraged from an early age, not to mention the fact that Alec was perfectly competent in everything we'd require. We all organized hiking bags. I packed a sleeping bag, a tent, lots of water, canned food, a portable stove, survival knife, compass, fishing rod, lighter. You get the picture. Our plan was to set off into the woods on the Friday and make our way about 15 kilometers in, although Alec's father did say not to go past the lake. I guess I need to explain why. On the outskirts of town, there was some sort of... facility. There was only one dirt road going to and from it, cutting through the woods. It could be found about a kilometre north of the lake. Those who had braved the hike through the forest reported that it was sealed off from the outside world via an absurdly heavy-duty concrete wall surrounding the entire compound. It had to have been at least four or five metres tall, they would say. It was besmirched with graffiti from those with the adrenaline-fueled impulsiveness required to go looking for it. The top of the wall was heavily bestrewed with angled spikes and an overhanging tangle of razor-sharp barbed wire to ensure with absolute certainty that no prying eyes would peer upon the compound's contents. All of this earned the building the townspeople's nickname for it. Alcatraz's wall was absurdly overkill for the purpose of keeping people out. What the hell could they have possibly been keeping in there that warranted such a ludicrous aggregate of defense? It didn't occur to me at the time that it wasn't designed to keep us out. It was designed to keep something else out. It was a common occurrence to see trucks and black SUVs coming and going, definitely military and government. The SUVs were occupied by shady looking men in black suits, the trucks with soldiers. The building was the obsession of those in the town interested in conspiracy theories. Their theories ranged from a containment facility for alien life to a research facility specializing in human mind control experiments. You understand what I'm getting at. Hearing all the theories fascinated me since I was young, but I never really believed in any of it. God, was I wrong. The sheriff did attempt to learn what was inside at the behest of some of the more neurotic townspeople, only to be forced to turn back at gunpoint. The town nutters had a damn field day with that. Since no one was allowed inside, there was no way to know for sure what the compound was being used for. The frighteningly plausible theories and general mystery surrounding the place like a fine mist proved to be enough motivation for people to steer clear of the place, for the most part. There were those few people reckless enough to go looking. 
one or two of whom didn't make it back. People didn't like to talk about that. Everything went smoothly for the first part of the afternoon. We had noticed some trucks speeding along the main road in the direction of Alcatraz. It was common to see that, but they were more than usual. That's weird, I remember thinking to myself. Alec elbowed me in the shoulder and chuckled. Maybe some of those aliens escaped from Alcatraz, eh, Cole? Ha, <laughs> very funny. We settled on ditching school early, leaving at three and walking until it got dark before setting up the tents. The forest was far more beautiful than I'd imagined in the weeks leading up to our expedition. The forest floor and trees were dense with the orange, yellows and browns of the autumn leaves. The trees stretched up so tall into the sky that the tops had reduced to being barely visible from our perspective. It was cloudy, the golden sunlight of the dim autumn afternoon bleeding through the cracks in the canopy high above our heads. The forest was alive with the calming sounds of birds chirping quietly around us, the chilly October wind sifting through the trees. All I can say is that it was truly an experience to behold. We found a good little clearing at about seven that night. Four hours of walking had taken its toll on my feet for sure. Alas, the work for the night wasn't yet complete. While Alex set up the tents, he had Dom and I take the saw and go scrounging for firewood. I had collected a decently sized bundle when my nose was accosted by the foulest thing I had ever smelt. The odour was unfamiliar, but I recognised it regardless as the reminiscent stench of death. I looked to my left and dropped the kindling I'd spent the last quarter hour collecting in sheer disgust and shock at the horrific scene before me. Damn. A deer, I think. It was hard to tell. The poor thing had been absolutely mauled, eviscerated beyond recognition. Its head was almost torn clean off, attached only by the sinews of the back of its neck. The ribcage had been torn apart, the entrails scattered all over the ground before it, some of it even splattered on the adjacent trees. I called Dom and Alec over, and upon seeing it, they both reared up and groaned in disgust. If anyone knew what was responsible for this act of animalistic savagery, it was Alec. I shot him a look. His face was painted with fear and confusion. Not something I had seen before. Alec, any idea what could have done this? No bloody clue. This isn't like anything I've ever seen before. By the way he spoke to me, I could tell he was truthful in that he had no idea. A bear could have done this, but predators kill for food, and this thing hasn't been eaten, Dom chimed in. This is so messed up. I didn't get much sleep that night. I don't think the others did either. The morning was spent exploring, but everything looked the same, so we tried not to stray too far from camp. The lake had a jetty, so we went down and did some fishing. We didn't catch much. The day descended into night. It would have been a little bit past midnight. We were talking around the raging campfire when we heard it. Gunshots. Rapid. Probably from a rifle of some kind. Two separate sets of shots. And then there was the screech. That damn screech. Shrill and piercing. No way it was natural at all. It couldn't have come from more than a few hundred meters into the forest. Dom interrupted the pursuant silence. Jesus Christ, what was that? I don't think we want to know. Most would have turned tail and bolted in the opposite direction, but we had alcohol-fueled courage on our side, and hence we decided to check it out. If only we had known just how bad the consequences of our stupid decision would be. We got our torches from our bags and trudged off into the darkness. After several minutes of looking, we came to where we thought the unholy screeching had come from. I strained my ears to listen. Nothing. Drip. I felt something warm on my shoulder. Drip. I used my fingers to wipe it off and placed them under the light of my torch. 
blood, still warm. I pointed my torch upwards and recoiled in horror, too shocked to scream. So did the others. It was a body, human, dressed in what looked like military clothing. It was impaled on a broken branch, only meters above the ground, both of its arms gone. His throat had been torn out. There were deep lacerations all over his torso. Alec stared in shock, unable to rip his eyes away from the horror before us. Dom put his hands over his mouth and started quietly sobbing to himself. I rolled over and vomited all over the ground. As horrific as the mangled corpse was, I heard a sinister, growling noise about 50 meters ahead and looked up from the contents of my stomach to see something much, much worse. Hunched over, eating what could have only been another corpse, was something that will infest my nightmares until the day I die. It was skeletal, as gangly as a rake, twitching erratically. It had antlers on the top of its head that had no earthly right to be there, with skin as pale as the full moon. It was on all fours, with its arms and legs bent and horrifyingly unnatural angles. The others noticed it as well. I knew because Dom's quiet sobbing was quickly replaced by deathly silence. I spoke shakily. What in God's name is that? It realized we were there and bellowed out the same infernally shrill screech that we had heard before. I yelled out in apprehensive realization of what I had just brought upon myself. Damn. The thing closed the distance between us and it in seconds with sporadic, terrifyingly fast bursts, alternating between the ground and the trees. I stumbled back, tripped over a root, and within a blink of an eye, the ungodly creature was on top of me, pinning me down by my arms. I screamed in pain at its knife-like claws digging into my forearms. It was humanoid. Its piercing eyes were all-consumingly black, and its mouth was lined with crooked, freakishly long and horrifyingly sharp teeth. It opened its hideous mouth impossibly wide and shrieked deafeningly loud into my face. I swear I saw my life flash before my eyes as it was about to tear into me when it shrieked in pain again. Alec had stabbed it in the back with his knife before it turned from me, grabbed him and sunk its teeth into his neck as he yelled out a blood-curdling scream that I can still feel resonating throughout my skull. No! I stumbled over to it, grabbing hold of the knife's hilt, and with all the panicked force I could gather, I wrenched it from the thing's back and stabbed it again as deep as I could, choking up the forest with its angry shrieks. It let go of Alec and stumbled to the side, but it was too late. My friend was dead. Dom and I looked at each other. I took one last look at my friend before we started in the opposite direction. I looked back and saw it pulling the knife out of its back, black with blood. I looked over at Dom. Hide! Hiding would typically be a bad decision, but there was no way in hell we could have outrun that thing. We both hid behind respective trees. I waited a few seconds and slowly looked back toward it on the left side of the tree. Nothing. I looked to the right and was forced to freeze before I had the chance to reinsert myself behind cover. It stood upright at well over two meters tall and within a meter of my face. It had to have seen me. Was it... blind? It shrieked, listening intently as it took all of my willpower to stop myself from panicking. The night wind being the only thing to mask the sound of my shallow breathing. Dom and I locked eyes and I mouthed a warning. It's blind. Don't move. He nodded, shakily in recognition. I don't know if what happened next was a sympathetic act of an otherwise cruel god or just a life-saving coincidence, but it started storming. Hard. The sound seemed to confuse and enrage it because it started to shriek and swing its claws around aimlessly. We took the chance and backed away, which turned into full-on running. This time, I didn't look back, as the hellish shrills faded into the distance. We ran until I tripped over. 
I must have hit my head on a rock or something like it, because I remember the feeling of blood trickling down my face while everything around me faded into blackness. The next thing I remember is waking up in a hospital bed. Dom had dragged me back to our camp and hidden me as best he could while he went to get help. We were both questioned by a couple of men in suits, except they weren't from the sheriff's department. They were the same men that we had seen in those black SUVs. They said only that they were from nearby. I couldn't help but wonder if they somehow had something to do with the thing in the forest. They claimed to have done a preliminary investigation, but I was shocked and angered to hear that they had declared it a bear attack. It was at this point that we both knew something was amiss. We tried looking into it, but the suits informed us that it was a closed case, implying that it wouldn't end well for us if we didn't leave it. I heeded the warning, but Dom didn't. No one's heard from him in days. I'm telling you this so that people will know the truth if I go missing. I don't care how many therapists they make me see, how many drugs they make me take. They can threaten me all they want. But I know the truth of what happened in the forest. <laughs>